Hi, I'm Lee McDonald from South Denver Cardiology. I'm one of our structural cardiologists and one of our interventional cardiologists. What we're going to talk today a little bit about is atrial fibrillation and strokes. Atrial fibrillation is a very common um, irregular heart rhythm uh, that people can have, particularly as they get older. And obviously, one of the main risks of atrial fibrillation, one of the main things that um, that we are concerned about when people develop this abnormal heart rhythm are strokes. What we want to talk about today is how to protect people from strokes. The most common thing that we do when somebody is diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, which is an irregular heart rhythm, is put them on a type of blood thinner if they have certain other risk factors. There are different types of blood thinners. There is uh, warfarin, which is the one that was around or Coumadin, which has been around for 50 years. Um, that's one where you come in and get your levels monitored and measured um, with either a little drip of blood from your finger or a blood draw. And those, are, those ones are a little more difficult because oftentimes people, depending upon what they eat, the levels can change. So that we have people um, that have to come in at least monthly and sometimes even weekly to get their blood levels checked to make sure that their blood is appropriately thinned to protect them from strokes. Over the last uh, decade, we actually have had a new class of medications um, called the direct oral anticoagulants, and those um, don't require you to have your levels monitored. So if you are put on one of these, sometimes people who were on warfarin before can't figure out why they don't need to have their levels monitored, it's because the drug acts differently. People don't have to actually come in and get it level, their levels measured. But you take that medication either once or twice daily, and it thins your blood. Each one of those medications that you can take, are their purpose is to thin your blood to protect you from developing clots. So let's talk about why would we put somebody on a blood thinner for um, atrial fibrillation. Well, atrial fibrillation is when the upper chamber of the heart stops actually beating synchronously. It's fibrillating. So it's just kind of wiggling. Fortunately, the lower pumping chambers, the ones that pump blood to your body, the left and right ventricle, they still beat synchronously. So you're still able to pump blood to your body. So people can live with atrial fibrillation for many years. But that upper chamber, if it's not beating synchronously, there are corners of it, and specifically one corner called the left atrial appendage that basically looks like a finger-like thing that sticks out from your heart where blood can collect. And if blood collects, just like if you were to cut yourself, if blood collects on the skin, it forms a scab. If this blood collects in this little finger-like thing because it's no longer squeezing in your heart, in this part of your atria, then a clot can form. If that clot forms in your left atrial appendage and then comes out of your, goes down into the main pumping chamber, it floats down and then the main pumping chamber pumps it, if it pumps it up into your brain, it causes a stroke. If it pumps the blood clot into your eye, you lose your vision in your eye. If it pumps it to somewhere else in your body, it can obviously cause severe damage. That is why for people with atrial fibrillation, the long-term treatment has been, we would like to put people on blood thinners to prevent the blood clot from forming, and if the blood clot doesn't form, then we don't ever have to worry about it causing a stroke. So atrial fibrillation, as we just talked, is a significant risk factor uh, for strokes. And to protect people from strokes, most people are put on blood thinners. When we started to discover that most of the blood clots, 90% or more, come from this little finger-like uh, portion of the heart called the left atrial appendage, people started wondering, what if we could just cut that thing off or get rid of that thing? Would we have to still stay on blood thinners afterwards? And through a series of devices and trials, we started to discover that if we actually now have a technology, a procedure that we can do, that we can get rid of this or cover this little corner of your heart that doesn't have any function and you don't have to be on blood thinners for the rest of your life. The only approved device currently in the United States is one called the Watchman device. It's a type of left atrial appendage occluder. At first, the thought process was, well, maybe we could surgically remove these or cut these off if they have surgery. And there are some procedures where we can put a little rope around this thing to try and uh, get rid of it. But by 
really now by by far the most common procedure that we are doing is the watchman procedure this is a procedure done through the leg you are asleep during this where we can take a small catheter about a smaller than a straw up to your heart we can pass through a wall and find this little location where this little finger like thing um, it exists we can then put a little cap on the top of it sometimes I make people think of their old garbage cans the metal garbage cans that we had where you put a little kind of cap on the top that's basically the same process we're trying to put that metal cap on the top so we never let any of the trash come out of that corner after the people um, heal usually about a month later most people really only need to be on an aspirin uh, for the rest of their life so it's a um, a really awesome procedure because we are able to take people who had to be on blood thinners and now with just one procedure they're able to be off of that for the rest of their life. The primary people that we target it for are people that aren't great candidates for blood thinners. The, the, re uh, the reason that is is obviously there are some people who have stomach bleeds or bleeds in their brain or of are prone to falling and those people we feel are better off if we can put this device in because then they don't need to be on blood thinners but as we gain experience with watchmen this is becoming more and more utilized what if you're a person who is a um, you like to ride horses but there's a risk of falling off or you're a rock climber and you don't want to be on blood thinners those are people who would be candidates for this as well so this is an exciting time now that we have something to offer people other than blood thinners to help protect them from strokes when they have atrial fibrillation. The left atrial appendage occluder um, device that's currently approved, the Watchman device, I wanna show you what it looks like. So this is a heart that has been cut open and these white things are the valves. These, this thing right here is the kind of the main pumping chambers and these are the atria up here. The vessels have been cut away as well. And as we discussed, this little finger-like thing that extends off of the atria, um, it kind of is almost like an appendix it really it doesn't have a huge function at this point in your heart but what we're able to do is take this device which collapses into a small tube get it to this location and then let it expand and as you can see then we basically are putting a kind of a cap on this little corner and the blood that was that was sitting in there or whatever sitting there can no longer get in or out um, and so it's basically just trapped there. Your heart forms a nice skin over this, and uh, your heart does not need this area. And then we can basically, um, the blood still pumps normally, and what ends up happening is you no longer need to be on a blood thinner after this, even if you do have atrial fibrillation. So this procedure is done through the leg, through a small straw in the leg where we can go put this device in. One of the um, exciting uh, things about South Denver cardiology and our structural program is that an interventional cardiologist like myself and an electrophysiologist work together. I think it's a, um, a real successful strategy. Um, each of us has different things that we excel at and I think together we make it so that our program when we take care of patients we really um, offer them a really kind of combined approach and we both have expertise and expertise in multiple things so it allows us to really take great care of the patient. The um, electrophysiology department here at South Denver Cardiology is one of the leaders in the nation uh, as well. We really have some fantastic electrophysiologists and they specialize not only on this portion of atrial fibrillation treatment but the other portions of atrial fibrillation treatment which include people being considered for cardioversions, ablations, or medical therapy. The um, atrial fibrillation itself, um, many people have a lot of symptoms from it. If you have symptoms from atrial fibrillation, many times you're a candidate for an ablation or a special type of medication to try and make the atrial fibrillation go away. That's where our electrophysiologists come in and can really discuss with patients what is appropriate for them. The other part of atrial fibrillation that we talked about is the risk of stroke. And those are the things that we've been discussing today about this device where we can help protect people from strokes. And that's where the structural team uh, steps in and we work together with the electrophysiology team to help these patients um, that would rather have this device put in than be on a blood thinner for the rest of their life.